Welcome to the second part of this three-part series on research synthesis for evidence-based health policy. Um, and we're excited for today's session because it's a bit more practice-oriented. So we're actually going to spend some time in breakout rooms um, working through the process of evidence synthesis, um, practicing, you know, what does it mean to do screening? How do we come to agreement around what to screen and how to screen um, and all that good stuff, um, which will then set us up for our final session where we will do even more practice and kind of application of this work. So welcome to part two. Um, Amy and Laura, do you want to add anything to that? Just that we are, we're librarians at the Tulane University <laughs> Um, Mattis Library of the Health Sciences, so, and we do work with a lot of systematic review and evidence synthesis teams. Yes, thanks, Amy. Laura, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, hi, I'm Laura Wright. I'm the coordinator for research services at the Mattis Library, and today is actually my 10-year anniversary of being at Tulane, so yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, and I've already introduced myself, but we are um, your facilitators for today. And so we will be going in and out of breakout rooms, um, conversations, um, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, to we go to the next slide? Great. Um, <clears throat> so as I mentioned, this is the second part of the three-part series. The next one is, the last one is next month. Um, and today it's roughly kind of a 75 minute workshop. We're gonna do a little bit of recap and review, spend some good time and some active learning, doing advanced searching, um, doing some screening, and then spending some time with questions and application um, to the real world. Um, Amy, thanks for dropping in the link, the Padlet. Um, so everyone, this is a tool that we're using to um, capture questions that folks have during this uh, presentation. Um, if I can share my screen just really quickly, um, just so folks um, who might not have been there at the last workshop, it just looks a little something like this. And if you just click um, on the add button right here, you can draft a question um, to us and it'll collect it here and we can spend time um, responding to in here or um, we will be monitoring this throughout today um, for us to go through any questions you have. So I'll stop sharing my screen. Thanks, Clara. Uh, yes, the slides sh were shared from the last workshop in a follow-up email through Eventbrite. So those, and if not, we you'll get them um, uh, through this one. So today's learning objectives um, <clears throat> are to learn about advanced database searching. So how do we ensure that we are getting the literature and science that we want through our evidence-based um, synthesis, um, creating a systematic search. We're gonna do that in PubMed um, as a, a, an example in terms of how to do that searching. And then we're gonna go through the process of screening and doing a hands-on exercise um, to go through that process really to determine how you know, what are the best practices in doing our article screenings? How do we ensure that multiple screeners are on the same page in terms of what they're screening um, to make sure that ultimately we get to the uh, data and the science that we want to be included um, and answering the related policy or research question. Cool. Um, Laura and Amy, do you want to recap here? <laughs> Yes, I can. Um, so we will just be doing a quick, um, a quick set of uh, breakout rooms to um, review workshop. Oh, uh, sorry, that, that's in a minute. But uh, this is just a quick review of what we talked about in workshop one. So we just talked about evidence synthesis generally, um, and about how that ties into writing for policy. Um, so if you were not at that workshop, we recommend reading the slides, watching the recording. Um, but for the purposes of the this workshop series, we'll be concentrating on rapid reviews, um, which follows the same steps as other evidence syntheses. Um, and we recommend you search two or more databases um, two reviewers are preferred for study selection, and one researcher may perform data extraction and risk of bias assessment. Um, you'll be learning more about this information as we go on, so uh, if you feel like you're not sure what we're talking about just yet, um, don't worry, we will be uh, guiding you through all of this. Next slide. 
And this is a, just a quick overview of the eight steps that we just touched on each of them throughout the, um, throughout the first workshop and just gave a overview. But for the purposes of today's workshop, um, we will be concentrating on steps two through four um, for the most part. And um, the, the next uh, workshop will really be hitting the ground running on the other steps. No worries if you weren't at the first workshop, you won't be uh, totally lost and you will have all of those resources to review as well. Now is when we're going to be doing the breakout rooms. Um, we'll be reviewing the homework, which I've also added in the chat um, in case you don't have that immediately accessible. But um, just if you did the homework um, or if you even if you didn't do all of the homework, uh, just talk about your research interests and um, share your research question where you found background information which keywords you searched, any progress you made on a protocol, and which databases that are available to you that you found that you could use on these types of projects. And you'll have about 10 minutes to share with your group, and you can look at the box link for that workshop as well, or for that homework as well. Thanks, everybody. I hope that was at least enlightening to kind of get an idea of what other people's research interests are and learn a little bit about what they've learned so far about their topics of interest and the resources that they found um, that they have access to. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Laura to talk about searching. And Laura, I'm going to just jump in real quick because our group had a cool conversation. So I just maybe want to share um, the homework assignment that we provided um, that Eclipse mnemonic is something that we think about and use when we're developing our policies research question. It's not to say we're like running through each part of Eclipse and outlining it, but rather um, um, and Delania, I hope I can use your example. Delania does some research and work in diabetes self-management with folks living with um, disabilities. And so we took that mnemonic and then thought about what is a question we would ask that then would lead us to the search terms we need to conduct the search uh, research synthesis. And so we came up with something along the lines of what intervention interventions shape the capacity of folks living with cognitive disabilities to self-manage their diabetes. And so in that example, when we start our searching, we're gonna do things like searching around the terms intervention. Um, we're probably gonna maybe include things like behaviors. Um, we're gonna, limit it or include search terms around folks living with disabilities and cognitive disabilities specifically. Um, and then, you know, our health state is diabetes. So we're going to limit all of our literature to diabetes. And so these are, um, we just want to provide that as an example of how we go from that question. And now we go into searching, which um, Laura will get into in more detail. Um, but I just want to provide that as an example to how we apply this um, in practice. Yes, that's great. It exactly the question and uh, the protocol should guide the next step that Laura will be describing, which is searching. All right, thanks y'all. Um, okay, well, so let's get started with today's learning by talking about searching the literature for your evidence synthesis. Uh, here are three main tips to remember when searching a literature. Document your search strategy. This helps you stay organized and helps your work to be reproducible. Um, I keep an Excel sheet with all the information about my searches, so I can quickly look back and see what I did the last few times I've searched. Uh, this is helpful if you're working on multiple projects, or if you need to step away from your project for a certain amount of time, or if you need to hand your project off to someone else. It's also helpful if you think you're going to want to update your review on your topic in the future and see what has changed in the intervening time period. Uh, your goal is to identify all of the studies that meet your eligibility criteria. So that you're sure that you're providing a good analysis on the topic, that's number two. And third, remember to use more than one resource to find your information. Using only one database will introduce bias into your analysis, so look at different sources of information to ensure a more thorough analysis. Now, uh, when you have a question you want to look into on a database like Google, uh, you can just type that whole thing in and get results. 
However, most research databases require you to break your question down into smaller topics to effectively find the information you're looking for. We're going to use the following question for this workshop today. What social determinants of health affect rates of maternal mortality in the Black community in the United States? Now, what are the main topics we are looking at with this question? We actually have four. One is the social determinants of health. The second is maternal mortality. The third is the Black community. And the fourth is the United States. Now that we have our topics, uh, we can go look in these research databases. Research databases usually have what is called a controlled vocabulary or a thesaurus that tells you uh, what words the database assigns to various concepts. PubMed is one of the few freely available research databases related to health, so we will start with PubMed. PubMed's controlled vocabulary is called MESH, and it stands for Medical Subject Headings. We don't have to remember that. Uh, but let's go into that database and see what the MESH term is for the Black community in PubMed. Okay, so we're here in PubMed. This is the main database we're looking at, but we want to come down here to where it says Explore and we want to go to the MeSH database. So this is a separate database that works with PubMed. It's telling you exactly what those terms are. So I'm going to go ahead and in the MeSH database, just type in Black community. And we'll have no terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down a little bit more, and I'm just going to see if we're looking for Black individuals, what that term is. So we have Black people and we have Black or African American. What we have here is a description of what this term, um, it means explicitly to this database. And we have a different definition down here. So what we can do is take a look at Black people and we can look at Black people or African Americans. So Black people is described as people having origins in any of the Black racial groups of Africa. Uh, note that the category Black or African American is available for the United States population of groups. So that's good for us to take a look at because we are very specifically focusing on the United States and maternal mortality there. All right, so this would be our term here. Now that we have this term, I'm just going to add it to my search builder. Okay, and that's a quick run through of how to use this. I'll go ahead and search in PubMed. And so we'll have one of our topics for this search. Okay, going back. So once you've finished your first search, you can use the additional databases and see what terms they use in their particular database. So I started with PubMed. If you are using something like CINAHL, which is one that's freely available in many public libraries, you can take a look at their controlled vocabulary and see what terminology they use. So you see what's very specific to that database. Okay. So once you've found your database specific terms, it's time to build out your search a bit more using synonyms. So the reason you want to use synonyms is in case the databases make mistakes, after all, they are designed by humans, and to make sure you aren't missing anything of importance. There are a few ways to find synonyms that I personally use. The first way is to look at any suggestions that the database gives you. You'll often find those in the controlled vocabularies. Another thing I do is a Google search and see what language people naturally use to discuss a topic. And the third thing is to think about field-specific jargon. Every field has jargon. So what is the particular jargon for your topic? OK, so let's think about some synonyms. Go ahead and put in the chat some synonyms for maternal mortality. OK, awesome. So we've got a few. And they're different from the ones that I've listed here, childbirth deaths. So we have terms like maternal death, uh, adverse birth outcomes, pregnancy-related deaths. So these are all good synonyms to think about when you're talking about maternal mortality. And sometimes um, perinatal mortality. Sometimes it's a good idea to just talk to other people and they'll give you ideas that you wouldn't have thought of. Awesome. Thanks for uh, engaging everyone. Okay. 
And lastly, uh, so we talked about breaking our question down into topics. So let's briefly talk about putting them back together. Uh, what we have here are called Boolean operators. Um, they're the ands, the ors, and the nots. So these diagrams give you a good image of what happens when you use and, or, or not in a search. So if you want to find information about your topics together, you would use and. So maternal mortality and Black or African Americans. If you want to find information about any of your topics and not necessarily together, you would use or. So if you wanted to do uh, maternal mortality or information about the Black community, you would do or. You would get stuff about everything. So it would not be limited to just the Black and African American community or to maternal mortality. You'd find stuff about both of those topics and everything related to them. If you want to find information about one topic but not about another topic, then you would use not. We typically advise against using not, uh, but feel free to play around with it in different databases. So for our question, what social determinants of health affect maternal mortality in the Black community in the United States, which Boolean operator would we use? Okay, so this is kind of a trick question. Um, if you're putting the topics together, you would use and because you want to find information about social determinants of health, maternal mortality, the Black and African American community, and the United States. If you are including those synonyms, you would want to or them with all of the similar terms. So if we were thinking about maternal mortality, we would want maternal mortality or perinatal mortality or child birth deaths. And um, this actually does make a lot more sense when you put it into practice. And one thing I tell people that tends to scare them a little bit, but then gets a little bit better is that it's like math. You're making an equation while you're searching in the database. Okay, so we have our first active learning um, activity for you today, and it's gonna be a search activity. So I'm gonna have Amy drop the link to the activity in the chat so everyone can have it before you go to your breakout rooms. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna practice searching for information about the research question in PubMed. And to reach PubMed, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it here in the chat. You can just do pubmed.gov. And we're gonna be looking at this question that we were looking at earlier. So what social determinants of health affect rates of maternal mortality in the Black community in the United States? So we're going to give you about 10 more minutes in breakout rooms of three to four people so you can start searching for these different terms. So remember to use your MeSH terms or your controlled vocabulary and to also think of synonyms. And Laura, Amy, I maybe want to just spend a quick second just showing folks um, kind of an example of what this might actually look like in practice. And so um, I just want to share, this is um, a search that we put together on HIV risk among gay, bisexual, MSM globally. Um, and so while we showed you in the practice, like how you put them together in one stringing search, what we are actually doing behind the scenes is running each concept's queries and different synonyms separately. So if here, if you look at the concept of gay or bisexual or men, other men who have sex with men, there's almost 52,000 studies. We wanted to only focus on systematic or scoping review type of studies, which there's almost 390. But then what happens is as we start putting these terms together, so one and two and three, so this was gay, bisexual, um, systematic, and then HIV infections, what you start to see is the numbers drop. So as our Boolean loops are operating, they um, are creating kind of synthesizing that literature and dropping down the numbers because it's finding just those terms. And I will say, this always kind of hits me when someone shares a search that I wasn't expecting to see all of a sudden, that it looks pretty intimidating um, until you start doing it more. Um, it actually starts making a lot of sense very quickly. It's kind of like computer coding. Um, it makes absolutely no sense until you have looked at one line or two lines and then you're like, oh, this isn't nearly as hard as they make it out to be. So just for a little reassurance for everyone, it always hits me that I'm like, oh, I understand this. Um, most people don't until they do. Um, we did want to give everyone at least a chance to share. We're going to do it for about one minute just due to time. But is there any group that would like to share what they were talking about in their breakout room? All right, perfect. 
Well, I'm going to go ahead and hand it back to Amy so we can start talking about screening articles that you find once you've done your search. Laura, will you be sharing the slides? Yes, I think they might have disappeared when I was in that room. Hold on one second. I think they just disappeared when Christopher shared this search, so no worries. They're back but Thank you very much. Oh, it's still on your presenter view again. All righty. <laughs> Sorry. About all around on me. All right. So now you can, yeah, you all can read it a little bit better. Um, so screening. So once you have all of your articles, that is the data collection. That's a very important part of the uh, uh, research. Uh, that's all the data you're collecting. So you want to collect as many relevant articles as possible. But of course, um, in that, because databases are not perfect, there will be some articles that are not relevant. And that is where screening comes in. So um, the purpose of article screening is obviously to remove studies that are clearly not related to your topic. Um, and that is where the inclusion exclusion criteria comes into play, which um, should be already outlined before you even do your search in your protocol. Um, so first, uh, you screen the titles and abstracts of um, each citation that comes in. Um, and depending on how you're doing it, um, there will be a lot of duplicate articles um, that 